sing with me. Under the sea, darling, it's better. On where it's drier, take it from me. Okay, okay, I know these are not the correct lyrics to this famous Disney song, but hear me out. The deep sea is not all about singing mermaids and dancing crabs. It's actually filled with monster-like creatures that'll give you nightmares. So, if you're ready to meet them, grab your scuba gear and let's dive into the deep, mysterious waters to discover their fascinating and scary world. With its menacing appearance, one could call this fishy the vampire of the sea. While named for their disproportionately large, razor-sharp fangs protruding from their mouth, fang tooths are actually quite small and harmless to humans. These choppers are actually more for catching prey than causing trouble. So there's no need to panic if you see one. And you'll be even more relieved to know that it's kind of unlikely for you to come across a fang tooth, since they are among the deepest living fish. A regular day in the life of a fang tooth looks like this. By day, they prefer to remain in the gloomy depths. Me too, fishies, me too. It's only towards the evening that they migrate toward the surface to have a feast under starlight. Ah, how romantic! And by daybreak, they return to the deep. What a chill schedule, am I right? So, as you can tell from their daily routine, fang tooths are among the more active deep-sea fishes. And by that I mean they seek out their food rather than just sitting and waiting. And thanks to their oversized teeth and mouth, hey, I can relate, they're able to attack prey that are even larger than themselves, which is very important in the very large, food-poor deep sea. Fitting to their environment, common fang tooths are dark-colored, either solid brown or black. And unlike most deep-sea fishes, they do not have light-producing organs or cells to communicate with each other or to attract their prey. Instead, they rely heavily on their sense of smell, in addition to making use of even the slightest bit of sunlight that makes it down to the depths. This light doesn't help them to see in any way, but it may be enough for potential prey to cast a shadow as they pass overhead, which lets fang tooths know they're around. Now here's one hilarious fun fact before we move on to the next creature. Fang tooths can never close their mouths because of their huge mouths and long teeth. But you know what? I would bet maybe 500 bucks that my orthodontist would claim he could fix that too. Our next horrific deep-sea animal is as real as a kraken can get. Giant squid, which actually did inspire the legends of the kraken, live up to their name. The largest one ever recorded by scientists was almost 59 feet long. It also probably weighed nearly a ton. You would think such a massive animal wouldn't be hard to miss. But since giant squid live deep underwater, they are difficult to come by. Giant squid, along with their cousin, the colossal squid, yep, they are different, have the largest eyes in the animal kingdom. They're somewhere around 10 inches in diameter. In other words, they are around the size of dinner plates. Peekaboo! Having such large eyes allows them to detect objects in the lightless depths of the ocean, where most other animals would see nothing. Not a zippo. Giant squids have eight arms and two long feeding tentacles that help them seize their prey. These tentacles are tipped with hundreds of powerful sharp teeth and are often double the length of their body. This helps them to snatch prey up to 33 feet away. Hey there, come a little closer. Most of what we know about giant squids come from those that floated to the surface and were found by fishermen. After years of research, it was only in 2012 that a group of scientists were able to successfully film a giant squid in its natural habitat for the first time. Yet again, the giant squid continues to remain largely a mystery due to their inhospitable deep-sea habitat. And maybe they're shy. Speaking of squids, this species is basically the space creature of the ocean. So, it's only been about 20 years since the big fin squid family was officially described by scientists. And there are still plenty of facts about them that are yet to be discovered. However, the big fin squid sightings as deep as 20,000 feet below the surface suggest that they can live deeper than any other known squid. You know what? Let's scratch the word space creature and call them the disco dancers of the deep sea to make things a little less scary. Because of their long slender arms, adorned with extravagant rib-like fins, kind of make them look like they're ready to hit the dance floor. 
Anyway, these boogie arms and tentacles are estimated to max out at just under 30 feet. Aside from the estimations, though, the largest known big fit squid was actually 21 feet long, with 20 feet of that being its arms and tentacles. How exactly a big fin squid uses them is still unknown, but scientists think they like to use them to trap prey that bump into them as they hang down in the water below their body or drag along the seafloor. There are only around a dozen confirmed big fin squid sightings worldwide, so you can just relax, because the chances of you getting hugged by a big fin squid are close to impossible. But I can't guarantee anything regarding your nightmares. <laughs> Now, these are not one of your regular Jaws sharks. Let's start with the most strange fact about a frilled shark. It's considered a living fossil because of its primitive anatomic traits. That actually makes more sense once you learn that this species has been around for 80-some million years. So I have both good news and bad news. Frilled sharks live in the open ocean and spend much of their time in deep, dark waters far below the surface. However, they do feed at the surface of the ocean at night. When hunting food, they move like an eel, bending and lunging to capture their prey. And they can actually swallow it as whole, even if it is larger than their own size. This is all thanks to their long and flexible jaws, which are equipped with 300 recurved needle-like teeth. Okay, I am somewhat freaked out now. Unlike the rest of the deep-sea creatures I've talked about, frilled sharks might sometimes accidentally get caught in nets. So if fishing is your thing, <laughs> beware. This telescope won't help you see the stars and the planets. With its protruding eyes and elongated body, this little swimmer looks like it's wearing a pair of underwater binoculars, hence the name the telescope fish. Found in cold, deep, tropical to subtropical waters worldwide, they're known to be the species that undergoes one of the most drastic transformations in fishes. When the first larva was described in 1954, it was believed to be a new species rather than the larva of a telescope fish that were known to science since 1901. Despite the fact that they are only around 6 to 8 inches long, they're able to latch onto snacks that are bigger than their own size. That is thanks to their massive and highly stretching jaws, making up most of the size of their head. These large prey are then folded in half to fit in their expandable stomach. In 1925, scientists found a 5.5 inch long fish inside the stomach of a 3 inch long telescope fish, which they described as neatly folded. Despite all this, their cylindrical tube shaped eyes are still the most fascinating and bizarre features of telescope fishes. Their specific shape increases light collection to help them detect their prey's weak bioluminescence even from a distance. But although their eyes are good for seeing things in the twilight, they're especially great at seeing silhouettes from below. That's why they orient themselves vertically in the water. Now I have to admit they look kind of cute if you ask me. Sort of like uglier versions of minions. Yeah, right? How heavy is the largest living snake? How can a snake eat a whale? Get ready, I'm about to answer these questions. Before the last ice age, giant mammals like mammoths ruled the world. The modern animal kingdom we're familiar with was shaped around 55 million years ago. I mean, there were still 1,000 pound bear dogs living from Asia to America. But modern whales, for instance, began to appear later. I'm saying modern whales because, surprise surprise, whales weren't always fully aquatic. The ancestors of the ocean's biggest animals once walked on dry land. They had four legs and lived on the coast. Now, I want to introduce you to a snake that used to eat these whales. The Palaeophys, a genus of a marine snake. Scientists say it's hard to understand how big the Palaeophys was due to its fragmentary fossil record. They assumed that it could have reached up to 40 feet long. Its fossils were found in different parts of the world, from England to Morocco and Virginia, USA. The Phileophys is extinct now. And sea snakes today are only about a quarter of the size this majestic creature used to be. So no need to worry about this underwater monster. But there once was an even bigger snake, the Titan Boa. 
It was around 50 feet long and most likely weighed over a ton. It used to live in what is now known as northeastern Colombia around 60 to 58 million years ago. Scientists say that it mostly fed on fish. Another giant animal that lived in the past was the black gigantopithecus. These primates aren't related to gorillas. They lived in the area of modern China. Some people believe that they're still alive, but so far, no one has laid eyes on them. Some people even go further and say that the stories of Bigfoot or Yeti are based on these animals. This rodent became extinct about 2 million years ago. Its main habitat was South America, more specifically, Uruguay. What's astonishing about this species is that it was the largest rodent ever known. It was bigger than a bull. Scientists believe that it weighed up to 1,000 pounds. A distant relative of this rodent is still alive today. It's called the Pacarana. It's a rare animal that lives in South America. It weighs up to 33 pounds and measures up to 31 inches, not including its cute and fluffy tail. The Arthropleura was an insect that lived in prehistoric times. Imagine a giant millipede measuring up to 8 feet in length. Here you go. It was one of the largest land animals of its era, about 315 million years ago. The Arthropleura's shell was covered with tough plates. These plates were there to protect the creature from damage. Most of the time, it burrowed into the ground to avoid becoming some other animal's dinner. Meet the Megalodon. Millions of years ago, this shark lived in the ocean and ate other marine creatures. It had wide teeth and its jaws were so powerful that the animal could finish off its prey with the force of its bite. It was one of the largest sharks to ever exist. Yet, this predator also went extinct. Scientists don't really know the reason. This made me wonder why animals were so big in the past. Nowadays, smaller creatures flee or hide from predators. But apparently, it wasn't like this before. Many centuries ago, animals didn't just run or hide, they fought back. Research suggests that this behavior may have been the most important motivation for prey to grow bigger. A study compared the skulls of ancient animals to those of their modern peers. The skulls of predatory animals have become shorter and narrower, while the skulls of the animals they hunted have become longer and broader. This means that predators learned to become experts in hunting, while prey worked on developing their defense skills. You see, a larger body size was a great advantage because it made it harder for predators to take down the animals they hunted. The bottom line? Self-defense made prehistoric animals larger. The second reason why ancient animals were larger is related to their bones. They had hollow bones, which are lighter than solid bones. This type of bone allowed large animals to move quickly. Let's take sauropods. They were a dinosaur subgroup. Sauropods had giraffe-like long necks and snake-like long tails. Compared to their body size, their head was really tiny. But since their bones were quite light, they could move around without having to carry additional weight. The eating habits of these animals were also related to their body size. When experts examined the fossils of one extinct mammal species, they found out that these animals had a diet that was high in nutrients and low in fiber. And this mammal was the largest land animal of its period. In other words, following this diet, mammals could grow to be very large. There was plenty of food out there, so they didn't have to worry about finding it. Fun fact, these animals also took chewing out of the picture. They could swallow their food in large pieces instead of taking small bites. Environmental conditions also played an important role in the evolution of larger animals in prehistoric times. Those animals tended to live in warm, moist climates that provided them with a lot of food. They didn't have to compete for food sources. Researchers believe that because of these conditions, natural selection worked in a certain way. I mean, body size was more important than such traits as agility and speed. Oh, and did you know that large animals tend to produce more carbon dioxide? And ultimately, a bigger volume of carbon dioxide increases the amount of vegetation in the animal's habitat. 
As for the abundance of oxygen in the atmosphere at that time, it could be another vital element for some animal's growth. A good but scary example of an animal that benefited from the high levels of oxygen can be the cockroach of the Paleozoic era. At that time, cockroaches were the size of modern house cats. Now this one would give me the chills if I ever faced it. Ugh. What about today? Well, there are over 3,000 species of snakes on Earth. The smallest snake in the world is the Barbados thread snake. It's only around 4 inches long when fully grown. And the largest one? It's the reticulated python. This snake reaches around 20 feet in length. The longest python was discovered in 1912. It measured 32 feet long. As for the largest and heaviest reticulated python, it was named Medusa. Medusa was approximately 25 feet long and weighed 350 pounds. These reptiles lived in Southeast Asia in rainforests, woodlands, and grasslands. Don't be confused though, the reticulated python isn't the heaviest snake in the world. This title belongs to the green anaconda. It weighs approximately 500 pounds. Green anacondas are found in South America and Trinidad in damp, humid areas. I have a bonus for you. Here is a flying snake. You can find these snakes in Southeast Asia. They don't fly like birds, of course, but they do use the power of flight. They can go as high as 300 feet. They leap from tree branches into the air. Once they take off, it's all about aerodynamics. Their main technique is flaring their ribs and pulling in their abdomens. While airborne, they undulate from one side to another and slightly up and down. This motion helps snakes to turn and glide. Why bother with all this if they can just crawl in an old school way? Scientists aren't sure, but they believe it might be related to escaping from predators. This way, they move from one tree to another without having to get down to the ground. Every now and then, people discover fossils of animals that lived millions of years ago. These ancient discoveries continue to capture our imagination. Which of these animals would you like to see alive? There are plenty of fish in the sea. Some of them look totally like Nemo or Dory. Then there's the butterfly fish and fancy guppy, which is indeed really fancy. And then there's, ah, what on earth is that? I would definitely not pay for a diving experience to see this guy. The anglerfish has the unofficial title of the ugliest animal in the world, but I wouldn't dare to break that news to it. There are more than 200 species of anglerfish currently swimming somewhere in the gloomy depths of the Atlantic and Antarctic oceans, up to a mile below the surface. Some of them prefer different living conditions, the shallow tropical environments. Different kinds of anglerfish vary in shape and size, from the famous black sea devil to frogfish, monkfish, footballfish, goosefish, batfish, and sea toad. The larger ones can be half as long as a full-sized bed, but most are less than a foot long. Since the choice of meals where these guys live isn't that huge, they had to come up with a unique hunting strategy. They don't waste their priceless life energy on following prospective prey. Instead, they use a piece of dorsal spine that sticks above their mouths like a fishing pole, hence the name of the fish. There's a sack of bioluminescent bacteria that glows brightly in the dark at the end of that rod. The light lures prey, and all the anglerfish has to do is wait, and then enjoy its lunch delivered right to its mouth. Their bodies are pliable and huge, so they can easily swallow prey twice their size. Deep sea anglerfish eat whatever they can find. Species that live in more shallow water aren't picky either and can eat anything from shrimp to snails and small fish. Only female anglerfish have the cool fishing rod feature though. So what about their males? Finding a soulmate deep under the sea isn't that easy. I mean, literally, there's no light down there. Plus, there are frigid temperatures and low oxygen levels. Anglerfish can't afford to go on many dates in those conditions, so they mate for life. And before you go aw about it, I have to tell you, they do it in quite a special way. 
male anglerfish are much smaller than their ladies. The contrast is so striking that when researchers first got interested in their love life, they thought those males were actually the offspring, or larvae, hanging out next to their moms. Certain anglerfish male species have receptors that alert them that there's a female nearby. After they mate, the male bites into his woman and stays attached to her head, belly, near her tail, and other areas he can access. While they morph together forever, the female fish gets the male's cells, DNA, and reproductive organs, but loses her immune response cells. The male gets free permanent housing and nutrition. Given the current real estate prices, it sounds like a dream. But that accommodation is shared by up to eight males, and they can't move out if they ever feel like it. You're unlikely to meet this deep sea fish in real life, but if you meet an anglerfish in your favorite video game, remember that you can easily outswim it and make it kinder to you with tranquilizing arrows. Once you befriend it, the anglerfish can be your scout and help you discover new areas with its bioluminescent pods. Back in the real world, down in the twilight zone of the ocean, about 650 to 3300 feet down, the anglerfish isn't the only creature you're lucky you'll probably never meet. Many of the locals look like they come straight out of science fiction or horror movies, but that's because they had to adapt to this dark, deep world. I did my best to get you prepared for the creatures you're going to meet, starting with the common fangtooth. They spend most of their lives deep down, but at night, they move toward the surface to snack. These guys are more active than most other deep sea dwellers. They don't wait for food to come their way, but actually follow it, and then get it with their long, hungry teeth. They don't have a built-in light bulb like the anglerfish, so they've developed a great sense of smell and use as much sunlight as they can get there in the depth to get around. Sometimes, even the shadow of a passing by prospective prey is enough for them to switch to action mode. And though they don't look too charming, they're completely harmless to humans if you ever run into one of these guys. Stoplight Loose Jaw sounds like a great name for an alternative band, but it's actually another deep sea resident with sneaky hunting habits. It has special light producing photophores under each eye. They emit green and red light like a stoplight, hence the name of the fish. Unlike other fish, these guys hardly ever leave the twilight and midnight zones. Their lower jaw is a quarter of the total body length, and the stoplight keeps it open all the time, hoping to get some lunch. It looks like a ferocious predator, but mostly prefers zooplankton, with an occasional dessert of shrimp, krill, and fish. I'm sure you didn't expect to meet a hybrid of an eel and a bird, but here it is. The slender snipe eel has a beak, much like that of a bird with curving tips. The beak is equipped with tiny hooked teeth that the eels use to catch the antennae of delicious shrimp. And it sure is slender, stretching up to five feet and weighing only a few ounces. Scientists don't know all of this guy's secrets, since it's pretty tricky to study in their natural habitat. But it looks like they only produce offspring once in a lifetime and then pass away. Glass squids like to take it easy in life and literally go with the flow. They're filled with a solution which is lighter than water, so they don't have to make any effort to move around the deep sea looking for food and partners. These creatures are transparent, so they blend into any landscape and don't even cast a shadow while moving. Talk about a great survival tactic. If danger finds it anyway, it can transform into a lumpy ball, pushing its head and tentacles into its mantle cavity. It can also release ink into the mantle and go from transparent to black. The same ink can protect it against hungry whales and seabirds. Another tactic they use to scare off predators is to activate their light-emitting organs around their eyes. Hmm, I'm getting hungry. Maybe I can snack on this sea cucumber. Ouch, it's moving. So I guess it doesn't belong in a salad after all. These soft-bodied fellows live in all parts of the ocean, from shallow waters to the deep underwater world. Most of them slowly move around with their tiny feet, but some crawl around by flexing their bodies. 
Sea cucumbers can shed their internal organs when there's a predator approaching. Those sticky organs distract the intruder, and the happy cucumber moves on and just grows the organs back. What's that glistening in the distance? Looks like someone dropped gems in the water. That's a sea sapphire, also known as the most beautiful animal you've never seen. Some males of this type of copepod can change color from deep blue to purple, red, or gold. One second later, it's gone. And it's back, shimmering bright. The secret to this magic is that their bodies are transparent and reflect light differently at certain angles. It looks like it's their way of communicating between each other and attracting mates. Female sea sapphires don't have the same superpower, but their eyes are bigger compared to males probably to spot them from a distance. Males roam wild and free, and their ladies stay in the crystal palaces of strange barrel-shaped jellies called salps. Researchers have been waiting for this find for a long time. They came in all shapes and sizes. It would have been hard to distinguish them from dinosaurs. Most species weren't bigger than a mouse. It's like a reminder of a long-gone era when its ancestors walked on all fours. The first mammals to walk the Earth were different from us humans in one important aspect. We walk on two legs. That makes us bipedal. But the first animals that made the transition from sea to land were tetrapods. This means they walked on four legs. The story of these creatures began in present-day Scotland. The region is home to the first terrestrial ecosystem in the world. The rock here is made from silica. This material is the building block of glass. Hot volcanic springs formed these rocks more than 400 million years ago. Such land composition is a treasure trove for paleontologists. These are the scientists who study the fossil remains of animals and plants. In Scotland, they found everything from plants with preserved cells to the oldest known fossils of insects. They even discovered a fungus that grew up to 29 feet tall. But there was one find that stood out from all the other ones. In 2015, scientists unearthed fossils of four-legged animals. The place of discovery was Willie's Hole, near the hillside village of Chernside in the south of the country. Researchers dated the finds to the Paleozoic era, about 360 million years ago. This was the time when the early ancestors of the dinosaurs thrived. The world was a much different place back then. Today, we associate Scotland with cold and rain, and kilts and golf. But at that time, this land sat closer to the equator. It had lush vegetation, and its climate was hot and humid. Droughts and flooding were quite common. It was the perfect setting for an important evolutionary event. Researchers have been waiting for this find for a long time. The fossil records had a 15 million year gap. Its name was Romer's Gap, after the Harvard professor who described it. Science was missing fossil evidence of the animals that ventured onto land on all fours. The five fossil species they found in Scotland shed light on this mystery. The first tetrapods were divided into two large groups. One of them contained the ancestors of birds, reptiles, and mammals. Their collective name is Amniotis. The other included the ancestors of amphibians, such as frogs. When these and similar species migrated to dry land, they discovered that they weren't alone. The earliest life forms that made this evolutionary leap were liverwort-like plants. We know this because scientists found their spores. They also discovered fossilized remains of an air-breathing millipede. It had tiny holes that allowed it to breathe air. This puts it among the first oxygen-breathing animals on the planet. And this species of millipedes is the first land-dweller in the animal kingdom. Today, the largest of such creatures is the African elephant. Scientists believe that one of the first four-legged creatures to make it onto land was an amphibian ancestor. Its name was Istiostega. The first part of the animal's name translates from Ancient Greek as fish. This reveals a lot about the way the creature moved. It dragged itself on the ground using only its front limbs that resembled fins. This is the way that mudskipper fish move on land today. This isn't how we imagine proper walking. But during the period our hero lived on Earth, it was the perfect way to get around. 
the climate had both extremely dry and wet periods. The ability to walk and swim at the same time was especially useful. The fossils from Scotland supported this claim. The fish-like animals scientists found had four slender limbs. This is the perfect equipment for life on land, not inside the ocean. There was further evidence. The fossils displayed well-developed lungs for breathing outside of water. But their legs were still too weak to completely lift the body off the ground. The tail section had to slither along the surface, similar to how a snake moves forward. This animal that resembled a modern-day salamander lived during the Paleozoic era. This was the time when four-legged creatures developed a standard number of digits at the end of their hands and feet, five on each. We know them today as fingers. All species that had more than five fingers started slowly disappearing. These pteropods split into two groups. The first of them had to return to the sea to lay eggs. This group would later give rise to amphibians. The second kind of tetrapods is more interesting to human evolution. They're considered the ancestors of reptiles, dinosaurs, and mammals. The Permian period came at the end of the Paleozoic. By this time, all life forms on Earth inhabited the supercontinent of Pangaea. There were vast deserts far away from the oceans. The more important species that walked on all fours during this time were the synapsids. They came in all shapes and sizes. But the only subgroup of synapsids to survive into the Cenozoic were the mammals. Doesn't seem like much, but we exist today thanks to these ancient tetrapods. As a species, we have come far in the tree of life. A recent study revealed that the first life form to evolve was an ocean-drifting comb jelly. This came as a bit of a surprise. For a long time, researchers believed that the simple sponge was the oldest animal on the planet. After analyzing vast amounts of data, comb jelly came on top. Or the bottom, depending on how you look at the tree of life. These ancient beings were squishy and had tentacles, but they weren't the true jellyfish like the ones we see today. The creatures lacked the bell-shaped body and stinging cells. Scientists cannot precisely date the species because they lack a fossil of the oldest comb jelly. This is not the case with other ancient creatures that once roamed our planet. The ancestor of dinosaurs, turtles, and crocodiles are familiar to science. These are the animals that appeared during the Paleozoic era. This was a time when true tetrapods appeared. Paleontologists recognized them by two distinctive openings on each side of their skull. The first mammals that appeared during this era resembled reptiles. It would have been hard to distinguish them from dinosaurs. Some of them later evolved features we all know today. These include fur and a warm-blooded metabolism. They developed during the time when dinosaurs dominated Earth. That's why these first true mammals were small. Most species weren't bigger than a mouse. Their diet consisted of plants, as they were herbivores. Also, they were creatures of the night. During the day, they were mostly hiding underground. Now this wasn't such a bad strategy. Some 66 million years ago, an asteroid fell on the Yucatan Peninsula in today's Mexico. And this spelled the end for dinosaurs. 75% of all species that lived on Earth at the time disappeared. The mammal's small size helped them survive and repopulate the planet. The era in the history of our planet that followed the Mesozoic was nicknamed the Age of the Mammals. The climate became warmer, so grasslands expanded. These were the ideal conditions for tetrapods to grow in size. Some mammals decided not to take this evolutionary path. Bats remained relatively small in size and took to the skies to join birds. And there are some tetrapods that return to the ocean. The most notable example are whales. Today, their closest living relatives are hippos. Both species are aquatic, but they develop this trait separately. The first whales were actually tetrapods. These were the most typical examples of four-legged land animals. If you saw them today, you would think they were oversized rats. That's what whales looked like some 50 million years ago. Paleontologists came to this conclusion in the 1980s by studying the skull of a now extinct animal. It lived around the edge of a large, shallow ocean. At some point in history, it returned to the marine way of life. Its back legs devolved. 
But sometimes, biologists stumble upon a living specimen of a whale that still displays tiny hind limbs in its skeleton. It's like a reminder of a long-gone era when its ancestors walked on all fours. Today, I'm going to tell you about creatures that had unique features which allowed them to grow to incredible sizes. They were some of the most impressive animals to have ever existed on our planet. The Argentinosaurus is a genus of sauropod dinosaurs that lived approximately 94, 97 million years ago in what is now South America. Scientists think it was one of the largest land animals ever, with a length of up to 100 feet and a weight of up to 100 tons. A farmer stumbled upon a giant leg bone while tending his cattle. That's how he discovered the first fossils of the Argentinosaurus in Argentina in 1987. Further excavations uncovered more bones, revealing a massive dinosaur that would have dwarfed most other animals of its time. The Spinosaurus, meaning spine lizard, is a genus of theropod dinosaur that lived around 112, 97 million years ago in what is now North Africa. It is believed to be one of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs to ever exist, with a length of up to 60 feet and a weight of up to 23 tons. The Spinosaurus is known for its distinctive elongated sail-like structure on its back. It was likely used for thermoregulation. It also had long crocodile-like jaws that were lined with sharp teeth. This allowed the creature to catch and eat large prey, such as fish, crocodiles, and other dinosaurs. The first fossils of the Spinosaurus were discovered in Egypt in 1912. The sperm whale, Phaseter macrocephalus, is a species of toothed whale that is the largest tooth predator on Earth. It also has the largest brain of any animal species. It is found in oceans all over the world and can dive to depths of up to 7,000 feet in search of food. You can easily recognize sperm whales by their massive, block-shaped heads, which can measure up to one-third of their total body length. They have dark brown or grayish-blue skin and a distinctive wrinkled appearance. The Titanoboa is an extinct genus of a giant snake that lived approximately 60, 58 million years ago. It is considered to be the largest known snake ever. It could grow up to 42 feet and weighed around 2,500 pounds. The first fossils of the Titanoboa were discovered in a coal mine in Colombia in 2004. This discovery meant a lot because it provided insights into the size and behavior of snakes during the Paleocene era, as well as the overall climate and ecosystem of the time. The blue whale, Balanoptera musculus, is the largest animal on Earth, measuring up to 100 feet in length and weighing as much as 200 tons. These marine mammals are found in oceans all over the world and can live up to 90 years. Blue whales have a long, streamlined body that is usually blue-gray in color with mottled patterns. They have a small dorsal fin and two pectoral fins that are about one-third the length of their body. Blue whales feed on tiny shrimp-like creatures called krill, and they eat a lot. A single adult blue whale can eat up to 8,000 pounds of krill in a day. The Leedsichthus is an extinct genus of large, bony fish that lived during the Jurassic period, approximately 165, 155 million years ago. It is believed to be one of the largest fish that have ever lived. Some estimates suggest that it could grow up to 50, 55 feet in length. The first fossils of Leedsichthus were discovered in England in the 19th century, and more recent discoveries have been made in other parts of Europe, South America, and Africa. Despite its enormous size, the Leedsichthus was a filter feeder, similar to modern-day whale sharks, and likely fed on plankton and other small organisms. The creature did it by simply swimming with its enormous mouth open, filtering water through its gills. The Pterodostro is an extinct species of flamingo-like birds that lived approximately 70, 35 million years ago. They were relatively small birds with a wingspan of about 2, 3 feet. And they were known for their distinctive long, narrow beaks equipped with comb-like structures used for filter feeding. The pterodostro lived in shallow bodies of water, like lakes and lagoons, and mostly fed on small crustaceans and other tiny organisms. The animal filtered them from the water using the comb-like structures on the inside of its beak while swimming through the water. The African elephant is the largest land animal on Earth and one of the most recognizable ones. There are two species of the African elephant, the savanna elephant, 
Loxodonta africana, and the forest elephant, Loxodonta cyclotus. You can see them in various parts of sub-Saharan Africa. These creatures can be identified by their large size, gray skin, and long trunks. African elephants can grow up to 13 feet tall and weigh up to 7,000, 14,000 pounds, depending on the species and gender. If you could dive right into the mysterious darkness of the ocean depths, who knows what you'd come upon? Legends that are hundreds of years old mention some giant sea monsters hiding deep down below the ocean waves, like the Kraken, the Loch Ness Monster, the Hydra, Leviathan, and so many more. Okay, no one has ever seen such monsters, but there are still weird and unusually big sea spiders, squid, worms, and many other animals that grew way more than we'd expected. Take a look at the colossal squid from sub-Antarctic waters. It's around 14 times longer than the arrow squid that lives near New Zealand. And deep down in the Pacific Ocean, there's a sea sponge as big as a minivan. Oceans contain about 96.5% of all water on our planet. Up to 80% of all life on Earth we've discovered is under the oceanic waves. We haven't explored, mapped, or even seen more than 80% of the ocean. In fact, we've mapped Mars better than we have the ocean bottom. The pressure down there is insane, and it would make you feel like you're holding up almost 50 jumbo jets. And temperatures at such depths are extremely low. Conditions deep below the oceanic surface are harsh, so creatures that live there need to adjust. That's why many of them grew very, very big to survive. Creatures that live in cold, dark depths are so big because of a phenomenon called deep sea gigantism. The deeper you go below the oceanic surface, the less sunlight there is. That's why the temperatures drastically fall. The result of this is increased cell size and longer life of creatures. Also, these creatures don't have as much oxygen as the marine animals that live in shallower parts. And their food sources are minimal. Much of the food they get comes from shallower waters, and only a little bit trickles down to the deeper parts. And when there's not enough food, being large is an advantage. Larger creatures can move farther and faster to find something to eat. Their metabolism works slower. They don't digest the food that fast, so they can store food and conserve energy for hard times when they can't find anything to eat. They don't need to regulate their body temperature either, which also helps them save some energy, which they can then transfer to other body processes. They mature more slowly and later than those living in shallow waters. The majority of fish species that dwell in deep waters live 30 years or even more. Orange roughy fish, on the other hand, live up to 150 years. This fella grows 24 feet in length and weighs up to 1.5 tons. But it grows to be so big for centuries. They start looking for partners when they're 150 years old. And they can also live this long because there are not so many predators at such depths. Also. There are no humans or other things that can disturb them or endanger their existence. At such depths, the environment is pretty stable, so many animals there are like living fossils, because they probably haven't changed in millions of years. The first 650 feet of the ocean's depth are considered to be the open ocean. The majority of the marine life we've discovered lives there, since that's the area the sun can still reach. And then, as you continue going deeper, you reach the Twilight Zone. It seems like nothing lives there. But at about 820 feet, you see a small oasis of ancient life blooming. For example, there are sea lilies, animals that have been living at such depths unchanged for millions of years. Coelacanths, another living fossil, have been living in the ocean for more than 360 million years. Hagfish haven't changed in a very long time either, for over 300 million years. This creature lives at depths of 5,500 feet. They evolved before the rest of the vertebrates, which is why this is the only living animal without jaws or a spine, even though it still has a skull. Deep sea creatures can't survive in shallow waters. 
They've evolved to live in depths under bigger hydrostatic pressure. Humans and other organisms that have internal spaces filled with gas would end up crushed if we could go to such depths. That's why deep sea divers always need to wear special dive suits designed for surroundings with higher pressure, even though they're not going that deep to the areas where these giants live. But near Antarctica, you can see gigantism way closer to the surface, like giant sponges, sea slugs, sea spiders the size of a dinner plate, worms, and even some enormous single-celled organisms. They all tend to chill in shallower waters. Scientists are not sure why exactly, but they think it could have something to do with oxygen. Giant species use just a little oxygen, and the waters around Antarctica are pretty rich in it which means there's hardly any limit to these animals growing bigger and bigger. Back to deep sea creatures. As mentioned, they had to adjust to strong pressure, so they almost don't have any air gaps in their body at all. They're mostly water-based, and since water is incompressible, which means it's not something you can compress, it helps them stay unaffected at such high pressure. But because of all that, if they were to go up towards the surface, they'd probably swell up, maybe even explode. Just look at the blobfish, the one that takes the title of the ugliest animal in the world. It looks normal deep down below the surface, where its natural habitat is. But when it gets up to the surface, where the pressure is 120 times lower, it changes its shape. The blobfish doesn't have a skeleton or muscles, so without high deep sea pressure, it ends up being all floppy and saggy. The dark oceanic depths are not just scary to watch, but to listen to as well. In 1997, scientists were trying to find underwater volcanoes located off the South American coast. During their travels, they recorded one of the loudest noises ever registered. It was pretty weird, too. It was so loud, even sensors from more than 3,000 miles away managed to pick it up. They later called it the bloop. It took them 15 years to conclude the sound came from an ice quake. That's when seismic activity breaks frozen ground. Water at the bottom of the ocean is not always extremely cold. There are hydrothermal vents on the seafloor, and the water that comes out of them can be up to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Powerful pressure, yep, the same one that would crush you, is something that doesn't allow the water to boil. There are hundreds of animal species that live near deep sea hydrothermal vents. Some of them, such as tube worms, are not like anything we have seen before. These worms absorb chemicals from vent fluids. That's how they feed bacteria that live in them. And in return, those bacteria give them the carbon the tube worms need to survive. Two thirds of all of the coral species scientists discovered live in dark, deep, and extremely cold parts of the ocean. Some even live in parts that are three miles deep. They can survive at low temperatures, such as 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of these cold water corals are more than 8,000 years old. They form amazing structures that can rise up to 115 feet tall. The deep is not just a mysterious world of unusual creatures. The landscape under the oceanic surface is magnificent too. The canyons hiding there make even the Grand Canyon seem small. For instance, check out the one located in the Bering Sea, the Zhem Chug Canyon. Its vertical relief is more than 8,500 feet deep. That's huge. The largest ocean waves are not the ones you can see from the shoreline. They occur under the surface, and they're called internal waves. They take place between two water masses that have different densities. They travel at speeds of thousands of miles per hour and can be 650 feet tall. It looks like a prehistoric creature that came from the time of dinosaurs. This scary beast is called the basking shark. It can grow up to 39 feet. People have only reported three of them in the past 160 years. The last sighting was in 2015, and before that, about 80 years ago. 
These sharks sometimes rise to the surface to filter out small animals, such as shrimps and other small crustaceans, when they want to have a nice, tasty seafood dinner. But when there isn't enough grub at the surface, they go down to the depths of almost 3,300 feet, where they tend to stay for months, which is something researchers discovered using satellite tags. Tag, you're it! Now, basking sharks like to spend their time in more temperate waters, but they can migrate long distances. They live across the globe, but in warm tropical or subtropical areas, they won't go near the surface because they're not fans of high temperatures. The lion's mane jellyfish is not that rare, but it's fascinating how large it is. It's the biggest among jellyfish species and the longest animal. Its total length can reach 120 feet. That's approximately 23 feet more than the longest blue whale scientists know about. The jellyfish has around 70 to 150 tentacles, and they all contain huge amounts of neurotoxins that can seriously harm you if you come in contact with the animal. But people don't usually come across this type of jellyfish because it rarely lives near the coast, preferring the open ocean. Generally, you can find the lion's mane jellyfish no deeper than 65 feet below the surface, where it dines on small fishes, zooplankton, and some other types of jellyfish. It uses its tentacles to catch its value meal. Hey, you want fries with that? The giant phantom jelly comes out of the darkness and depths of the ocean's midnight zone. Its sunhat-shaped bell reaches over 3 feet across. This bell trails four ribbon-like mouth arms that can be up to 33 feet long. This quite rare creature uses its mouth arms to catch unfortunate animals swimming around and not knowing what's coming for them. Giant phantom jelly propels itself through the water with periodic pulses coming from its orange head. It glows faintly and mysteriously in the pitch-black depths. It lives across the globe in all the oceans except for the Arctic. I'm guessing it's too cold. Because of its odd shape, people often call the oar fish the dragonfish or sea serpent. It's about 26 feet long, which makes it the longest bony fish we know about, and lives at depths of 3,300 feet. Oar fish spend most of their time in the deep, dark parts of the open ocean in tropical and subtropical areas. They almost never come to the surface, unless, you know, invited. It's a ribbon-shaped and shiny silver creature with a long red dorsal fin and red or like pelvic fins. Its body has no scales and is very thin. The fish can grow to a length of about 30 feet and weigh 660 pounds. Oarfish have really big eyes that help them see better in their dark, scary surroundings. The frilled shark is definitely one of the gnarliest-looking marine animals out there. If you saw it somewhere, you'd probably think you went back to the age of dinosaurs. Yup, the frilled shark is a prehistoric creature because its roots go back 80 million years. This living fossil can grow to be 7 feet long. It got its name from its frilly gills. Even though frilled sharks have the shark part in their name, they swim similar to an eel in a distinctly serpentine way. Its mouth is terrifying. Similar to the maw of the great white shark, it has 300 trident-shaped teeth lined in 25 rows. Hey, come a little closer, huh? Researchers discovered this creature in the 19th century. But people rarely see it. And no wonder. It usually lives at depths of between 390 and 4,200 feet. Most of the time, the frilled shark feeds on squid, swallowing them whole. Its long jaws allowed the frill shark to gape extra wide and swallow animals half as long as its entire body. Goblin sharks are very rare. Researchers have spotted fewer than 50 of them in more than 120 years. But maybe that's for the best, since we're talking about a pretty scary fella with a narrow snout and sharp teeth. It's also capable of thrusting its entire jaw outward when it wants to catch something. Hmm, sounds familiar. As it's lurking through the dark depths of the ocean, a goblin shark sees a small squid that looks quite yummy. The dangerous animal inches toward the squid. When the poor creature notices the predator, it tries to dart away. But it's too late. The shark has already thrust its jaw the whole three inches out of its mouth. This jaw is connected to the flaps of skin the shark can unfold. This helps a lot because the goblin shark is a sluggish animal, so it's pretty hard for it to chase its food. 
After finishing its lunch, the goblin shark puts its jaw back in its mouth and swims away as if nothing's happened. Goblin sharks mostly live at the bottom of the ocean. Like many other shark species, they prefer swimming alone. Here's a silver-colored creature with very rough skin. That's the ocean sunfish, with a total length of almost 11 feet. Its other name is mola. The ocean sunfish is the heaviest of all bony fish out there. People sometimes call it a swimming head because of its bizarre appearance. These creatures have such a weird shape because they're born with a back fin that never actually grows. It just folds into itself as the animal matures and creates a rounded rudder. The sunfish is a bit clumsy. It moves with the help of its mighty fins that allow the animal to swim on its side. This marine inhabitant is a solitary creature. It mostly feeds on zooplankton and jellyfish. The spotted wobegong is one of the world's rarest sharks. It grows to be more than 10 feet long. It may not look as terrifying as some of its shark relatives, but it's pretty good at catching unsuspecting animals swimming past, mostly during the night. The animal has a spiracle, which is why it can breathe while staying still at the bottom of the ocean. It's motionless most of the time, which is why you can barely notice it. Its flat body and large pelvic and pectoral fins blend in with the underwater terrain. That's why they're so good at hiding. This ability helps when these sharks want to protect themselves, too. Wobegong means carpet shark. They usually live close to the ocean floor in coral reefs, on sandy bottoms, and under piers. People have even spotted the shark in the water that is barely deep enough to cover its flattened body. Now, blobfish lack teeth and bones, so they can't actively hunt. Since they don't have much muscle mass, they can barely move around. Hey, I had a roommate like that once. They get their energy from animals they scoop up from the seafloor. They also know how to conserve this energy. That's how it usually goes with deep-sea creatures. They don't have as much food as those animals that swim closer to the surface. Instead, they have special body mechanisms that allow them to save energy for the times when they don't have much to eat. Pressure at the depths where the blobfish lives is 120 times as high as that at the surface. That's why the bizarre creature looks like a weird gelatinous mass only when you bring it up to the surface. The pressure here is not strong enough to keep its body together. Hey, breaking up is hard to do. The white margin stargazer could compete with the blobfish for the title of the ugliest animal in the sea, don't you think? Now, this animal has eyes on the top of its head, together with an upward-facing mouth which the creature uses to hide itself in the sand. That's where it spends most of its time, with only its eyes protruding from the sand. It chills this way until some small animal passes by. It can lunge at its target incredibly quickly, literally within milliseconds. This creates a vacuum in the water that pulls in a crab, fish, or some other small, unfortunate animal. Another tactic involves venom. This fish has a venomous spine in its shoulder blade that helps with catching other animals and defending itself against enemies. Even though it's not related to the electric eel, the white margin stargazer can generate an electric shock as powerful as 50 volts. Ow! 450 million years ago, no, I wasn't around then, the sea level was higher, coral reefs started to form, the climate on our planet was stable and warm, not even dinosaurs were around yet. The time when bony and jawed fish we know as sharks appeared. They've been dominating the oceans and making other marine creatures flee in fear ever since. Many of them, like great white sharks, have evolved and adjusted to life in the open ocean as hunters with a pretty high position in the food chain. They're less diverse today than before. One of the reasons is the asteroid strike from the age of dinosaurs. After it reduced the number of shark species, only smaller and deepwater kinds that ate primarily fish survived. They started getting bigger over time. Near the surface, sharks such as makos or great white ones develop faster movements and are somewhat between gray and blue to blend in with their surroundings. The epaulet shark can even walk on the land. It can't take a walk on the beach because it can't breathe outside of the water, but it lives on coral flats in shallow tropical waters, so it can walk in kind of a crawling motion. But deep down below, there are mysterious alien-looking, often huge shark species that didn't come to the surface, which is why they didn't need to adjust to the new environment and different conditions. 
They haven't changed a lot through time, so they're some living fossils. These creatures mostly don't have five gill slits, the most common number, but six or seven. It's because there's less oxygen the deeper you go in the ocean, so they need more gill slits. Sharks on the surface evolved to have fewer gill slits. Six-gill sharks are the most primitive sharks we have today. Their skeletons are like those of ancient extinct sharks, and they can survive only in very deep waters. Like cats, sharks have a layer of reflective cells placed inside their eyes, which helps them see better in the dark, deep sea or cloudy waters. Sharks on the surface have big eyes because they evolved to hunt in the sunlight, so they tend to rely on their vision. Those that live in shallow waters have small eyes, so they can protect themselves from the sand. Like some other deep-sea creatures, six-gill sharks also have bigger eyes to take in as much light as possible. They have more light-sensing rods, but don't distinguish colors that well. In the ocean's twilight zone, with the minimum of sunlight, there's a couple of bioluminescent shark species. They don't take in light within their eyes, but produce or re-emit it with their bodies. Their skin or organs have specialized cells that produce a soft blue-green light. Deep-sea creatures that produce their own light do that to attract their prey, deter animals from going after them, or, scientists think, communicate with each other. It can even help them to camouflage. They do it by hiding their silhouettes from animals going after them. They produce enough light to match their surroundings. The biggest luminous underwater creature is the kitefin shark. Found swimming 980 feet below sea level, preying on ground fish or smaller sharks. It can grow almost 6 feet long and lives 3,200 feet below sea level. Deep sea sharks are also bigger than those on the surface. The Greenland shark can grow up to 24 feet long, bigger than a great white. There's a thing called deep sea gigantism. Creatures in nutrient-poor depths of the ocean grow bigger because, that way, they lose less energy as heat. The Greenland shark lives its life in slow motion. It has a slow metabolism and can go very long periods without food. With their slow pace, they evolved to live up to 500 years at depths of 7,200 feet. Sharks in shallow waters catch their prey, relying on agility and speed. But for them, it's easier because there's plenty of food on the surface. Deep sea sharks, with less food and slower life rhythm, had to develop a different style. They're more opportunistic, definitely not picky, and don't care if their future meal is alive or not. Frilled shark, another living fossil from the darkest depths, hasn't evolved much through time, and they're one of the last of their kind, with all of their relatives already gone extinct. It grows up to 7 feet long, primarily hunts on squid, and catches other sharks and fish. It looks like a dinosaur, a snake-like face, a long, smooth, thin body that moves in a serpentine way. It can propel itself with the power of its tail and curl like snakes. They don't swim in a straight line like other sharks. Cookie cutter shark grows up to 20 inches. It got the name because of the way it feeds, biting off small pieces. It's a parasite creature, which means it feeds off bigger animals but leaves them alive. They have sharp teeth and sometimes even swallow those that fall off on purpose. Some researchers think it could be because they live in the depths that are nutrient-poor. If they swallow the teeth, they could recycle calcium and other material from it. Prickly shark is a rare and unusual creature with many thorn-like denticles and two small dorsal fins. It lives mostly in the depths of the Pacific region up to 1,900 feet. Ghost sharks are not even real sharks but fish closely related to them and rays. They have big pectoral and pelvic fins, two dorsal fins, pretty big eyes, and unlike their cousins, have a single external gill opening. Ghost sharks have slender tails and can grow up to 80 inches, silver to blackish color. They sometimes live in rivers and coastal waters, but also in the depths of the ocean of 8,200 feet or even deeper. They are pretty weak swimmers, so they tend to feed on invertebrates and small fish. Goblin Sharks Swimming through the deep sea, this creepy shark with a flabby body suddenly sees a small, innocent squid. It goes toward it, but the potential snack notices it and quickly starts moving to dart away. It seems like the plan could work at first, but then the shark suddenly thrusts the jaw of its mouth and catches the poor little squid in a second. 
After the meal is finished, the animal simply fits the jaw back into the mouth and goes away as if nothing happened. This is possible because it has a jaw connected to 3-inch long flaps of skin, which is why it can unfold from the snout. It can grow up to 12 feet long with a weight of 460 pounds. Scientists think goblin sharks are mostly active in the morning and evening. The shark has a long, prominent snout and specific sensing organs on it. It uses them to sense electrical fields in the dark oceanic depths. Seven-gill shark is a big cow shark, brown to silver-gray on top, white underneath, black and white spots, with a thick body, a small dorsal fin, and a wide, blunt snout. It can grow up to 10 feet long, mostly lives in the depth of 1,870 feet, but you can also find it in deep channels and bays. It can be aggressive toward humans if provoked, so don't. Like most deep-sea creatures, it's an opportunistic hunter that's not quite picky but likes to go after dolphins, seals, porpoises, and other marine animals. Megamouth sharks mostly live in the depths of 15,000 feet and spend most of their time in the dark, like me. Scientists discovered it in 1976 because it went near the surface at night to feed on zooplankton. That's the only time these sharks go there. During the day, they return to their quiet, dark, and mysterious depths. They are filter feeders, which means they keep their mouths wide open while swimming, so they filter the planktons they like to eat. There are organs that produce light inside of their mouths, which attracts potential prey, such as pelagic crustaceans. These sharks live in the deep parts of the ocean, but you can rarely find them below almost 2 miles. Scientists think some other, stronger bony fishes outcompeted them. Deep parts of oceans became oxygenated around 70 million years ago, and sharks have been around way longer. But bony fishes adjusted and adapted efficient ways to use oxygen, while sharks were slow with adaptations, so they lost. Also, oceanic depths are way colder, which is challenging for fish and the rest of cold-blooded animals because the speed of their metabolism widely depends upon the external temperature.